Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about polar graphing of curves. We can use our technology, but we do need to know some of the basic formulas and some of the basic shapes. They have their own special names. So, here we go. Take a look over at this chart right over here. First things first, we have circles. These circles are of this basic form. You'll notice if it's A is greater than zero, then you end up with the circle on this side of the origin. If it's less than zero, you end up with a circle on this side. Those are using cosine because cosine tends to work in a left and right fashion versus sine, which tends to work in an up and down fashion. Same thing here. Whether, it, whether A is positive, it goes up. A is negative, it goes down. That's what you tend to get. Now, if we talk about limosomes, limosomes is how you pronounce that, you get everything from this one with a loop in it, to one with a dent in it, to one with a slight dent, followed by no dent at all. And it all really depends on the values of the A's and the B's. So you have A is less than B, A is equal to B, B, A to 2B, and A is greater than 2B. So all of these determine which it is. Now, this guy right here, this guy right here, it's called a cardioid. It's called a cardioid because it has that indentation that looks very much like a heart. So, using those pieces of information, we can say, well, if it's A cosine theta, A sine theta, most likely just a circle. If it's A plus or minus B cosine theta or sine theta, we may be looking at a limosome. Now, If we go back over here, we can talk about a few more shapes. These shapes here are your roses. Now, they're roses because you have multiple petals. But in this case, you'll notice if I have an even number in front of the theta, sine in theta, you'll notice the n is in with the theta, you double the number of petals. If it's odd, you have exactly the same number of petals. You have a lemniscate, lemniscate, you'll notice its key difference is it's r squared equals these things rather than just r equals these things. Now to put this in a calculator, by the way, you have to use a square root. Finally, if you don't see any sines or cosines at all, you simply have r equals a theta plus b. Then you end up with this, the Archimedes spiral or Archimedes screw. And so you can take a look at where those start. So using that information is very helpful. Now, additionally, when we go over to our text, you'll see that they want you to actually graph things by hand. If I go to page oh, 543, you'll see their graphing involves XY tables. You can get to your XY table fairly easily. All you have to do is from your graph go to second table and you can read your table through and you can graph based on that table right there. Now, going back over here to 548 we start seeing the homework components. You do not need to plot using the point. Actually, I take it back. You do need to plot using the points for just number one. So I want everyone to do just number one by making a T table. Do it from 0 to 360. Do it from 0 to 360 by tens. That should be about 36 points. We're only going to do it once. So, use that piece of information to try to graph. Additionally, you're going to do 26 to 33. So, if we pull up, if we pull up what we're looking for, okay, for the homework here, Page 548, 26 to 34, and 50 to 60, graph number one by hand. If we take a look at the text itself, you'll notice I don't want you to use 
the zeros and the maximums. I want you to just look at the equation, use our grid to figure out what equation is that, what shape. Then you may double check it with your calculator. If you go to the next page or section, you will find matching of graphs to equations. You know, some pretty cool graphs come up. So, practice with your calculator, do one by hand, get to know the graphs. There will definitely be a quiz on the name of the graph, the equation of the graph, and the shape of the graph. So, of all the basic graphs in the grid, so make sure you do that. And here is the homework one more time.